You're bringing up a very, very important part of the struggle that we're having right now today. And we have bills that are being passed right and left. We're going to vote on this thing called NORA on November 4th. And if we don't read on it and understand it completely, new dynamics are going to take place that are going to continue with this road to recidivism. It's something that has been put, that's being put into action to, to short changes and have us thinking that we're not going to have to pay the bucks out to incarcerate people. But what is not told to you is that 80% of the individuals who are let off the hook because they have nonviolent offenses, they never turn up at drug court. And they end up doing violent offenses. But we're in a pendulum swing. We have no mental health institutions the way we did in the early 1900s. That has gone downward, and prisons have spiraled upward. And the major thing is that prison business is huge business. There is not much incentive for us to have community treatment centers. For example, Father Joe, St. Vincent de Paul in San Diego, the rescue mission, there are three or four others that have been known for the homeless and for individuals who are coming out of prison with their 200 bucks and if they really want to try to make a change. And Second Chance is something that was founded by a guy named Scott Silverman who is an ex-homeless guy, brilliant, brilliant guy, who's doing a damn good job at what you're, you're mentioning here. But his program is three weeks long. Somebody goes in for an intense three weeks, and if they don't make it, they can't help themselves. Individuals who have high needs, not high risk in criminogenic behavior, but high needs, maybe they have drug dependency, not drug abuse issues, but drug dependency. It's a huge thing that we don't educate our public about. Just as the psychotherapist had mentioned here about the parenting being a huge part of this as being a part of our success for the future of individuals and starting it out, I believe, and starting it sooner than high school, I think that we can do things with children drawing when they're in grade school. I think we can reveal that children have not gone through the necessary separations because you have a five-year-old who's acting like a three-year-old and instead of putting them on Ritalin and telling the parents, oh, your child has ADHD, we need to confront that parent and say, this child needed more of you. Maybe it's not like your, the little sister or the big brother, but for some reason he needs more of you. That's all we need to do. Now I'm not trying to oversimplify it, but some extent we're missing the boat on these parenting skills. And you can't, you, whereas you can't tell an individual, I had students at Boulder who were saying, well, when I was in eighth grade, I never wanted to think of having a baby. And I said, well, how old are you now? And she said, well, I'm 20. And I said, well, do you think you're having a baby? And she said, no. And I said, well, it could happen to you any day. What are you going to do? You know, I mean, we know that kids are sexually active at that time. We know that kids experiment with drugs. We know that kids do not understand the damage of crystal meth on a 14-year-old brain and the neurotransmitters versus an 18-year-old or a 24-year-old. It just escalates. The younger it is, it escalates. So this prison situation... Kids getting out who are 19, 20 years old with 200 bucks, they're not going to go out and look for a community rehab where there might be some guys who are past vagrants or whatever hanging out trying to father them. Or They're not going to do it. They're going to go back to their old tricks. They've created families in their gangs because their own families are so dysfunctional. So we have huge problems, huge gaps. But then Nora comes along on November 4th, and we're all in this quandary over Obama or over McCain. That's all we see, Fox, CNN. Do we want to hear the Democrat? Do we want to hear the Republican? Back and forth. We're not dealing with any of these real issues. These real issues are our society. It's sick. We want to blame the criminal justice system. But the criminal justice system cannot function when in our society we do not allow judges to mandate the conditions of release from prison. So you have an individual who's reading at second grade level, he's going to get out of prison, he's going to go to some community, something or other for, oh, well, he can't handle it for this long. And the next thing you know, he's dabbling in drugs again and he's back into prison. He knows prison better than he knows his community. So it's a whirlwind. And we have to figure out how do we fetter this out and make things work right. In San Diego County, luckily, the sheriff, um, when I presented the book to him in early September when it first came out, um, I, I thought he was going to like the book. He didn't like it. it was, in fact, his wife emailed me and said, 
you know Bill wasn't even in tenure when you did this project. I said Bill was in tenure, and it was his assistant sheriff who followed me all the way through it after seeing the pictures of my homeless individuals. And you know, Lois Collender wasn't very happy. Bill Collender isn't very happy. They're taking this thing personally. They're not looking at this from the standpoint of I'm showing what the typical jail is for women in the United States today. I'm not showing that San Diego is abusing women. Now I'm going around the universities and I'm telling them the good things that Bill Collender has done in the later part of his tenure, which he is doing things. But he's almost ready to retire. He's 73 years old. Okay, what things is he doing? Well, he's working with Bonnie DeManis, our DA. What's Bonnie DeManis doing that's great? I talk to Bonnie. She sends me to Dr. Igor Kutsunak at UCSD. What's Igor Kutsunak doing? He's a psychiatrist. He trains case workers, case managers. They are applying Doug Marlowe who is a JD and PhD at Penn State, his philosophy of that we are on this pendulum of diversion or incarceration. But if we follow along the line of diversion to incarceration and we assess them on high needs, low needs, high risk, low risk, you come out with a composite. So Igor Kutsnak is taking his case managers and for right now, and this is, we're just being used Actually, all counties in the state of California can do this if they will activate it, and they need to activate it as opposed to, to signing up for NORA. And that is to get your county to take nonviolent volunteers who serve their term. Don't have them released from incarceration. They need to do their sentence. But they go through it with two forms of case management. They go through it with a case management that takes them into prison, say they have a four-year term, and while they're in prison, they are, based, they're, they are, are leveled out based on their literacy and their needs for remediation. And then they're followed through with another case manager from six months prior to release to 18 months outside. They get job skills, and it's working. We already have a foundation that's working. Do we publicize this? Does anybody in this room know about SB 618? And that is what 618, SB 618 is that when an individual says at pre-sentencing, okay, I'll do my sentence, I do want to be a part of this program and I do want help this time. Well, there's something about that contract of saying, I'm gonna be clean. They go into the prison, do they have problems in the prison yard? Sure. Do they get protected or sent into a community that's only a healthy, well community? According to Igor Kutsnak, that's not a good idea because they're gonna to have to come out and live with adversarial situations as well. So it's better for them to have to fight through it. With guys, it's a power situation. With girls, it's this tendency toward mothering and neediness. When these women go into jail, particularly in the minimum security yard, it's about bonding. I swear they release oxytocin, which is the bonding hormone that women can do together. It's also the hormone that women do when they're nursing their, their babes. And when these women get together, it is like I have goosebumps now remembering it. When I took the sound clips, and I apologize, we didn't have a sound system here that could, could fetter out some of the background noises, and it may have been hard for you to hear some of this. And some of the women, because they're bipolar, they talk blah, 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 blah. And there's nothing we can do about that, but at least you have the exposure to how they really do sound. And so when this bonding is going on, this, there is this... I don't want to be in here. I want to go out and do more drugs. That's one side of their mentality. But the other side is, I'm losing my children. I'm losing my babies. I'm losing everything. I don't have anything. And then they bond with the women who are there in the unit. There's lots of lesbianism that goes on. Women who are outside in dysfunctional relationships, doing drugs. This sounds terrible. And it is terrible, and these babies, we have, didn't put this figure, but we have 550,000 individual children who are in foster care in the United States right now. And that's going to be, who's going to be with your grandchildren. And your grandchildren are going to be, you know, fettering out all the money for the taxes, et cetera, for that. So we need to do something. Let me turn it out to the audience. I'm probably putting you all asleep. Anybody have any other comments? Go ahead. Yes, Nora is a bill that is, is being presented in an attractive way to look as if we're going to reduce the incarceration rate 
and therefore not have all of our big bucks going to the prison system. But there's really no incentive to not have big bucks going to the prison, prison system because then you have the McDonald's and the telephone companies and everything else not having the business that they need to keep our business going. So what does Nora say? Nora says that